Hey everyone, how are we doing? My name is Tim Pongres and this is Focus on Detailing. Today's video will be all about a popular Aussie car getting some much needed TLC. This video is all about a two-stage correction job that I completed recently. I run through from start to finish the steps that I underwent and the products that I used. I was really happy with the end results, the customer was super pleased, and I hope you all out there enjoy watching this. This VF Holden Commodore Series 2 is personally one of my favourite they've brought out. It's the black edition with a beautiful blue and black colour scheme. Unfortunately, the condition of the paintwork wasn't so beautiful. There were heavy swirls and scratches throughout. But before I got into fixing any of that, I first needed to clean the car to give me a better idea of what was ahead of me, and to prep it for the next stages. As usual, I start with the wheels. I use Jay Leno's clean strip for both the wheels and the paintwork to help lubricate the given utensil across the surface. I generously sprayed Bowden's own wheelie clean across the face and all inside the rim, then use my wheel wheelies to agitate the product for superior performance. I'm aware some people just let the wheel cleaners rest then pressure wash off, but these wheels are a little messier and need the extra attention. I then use my brush to clean the face and all around the lug nuts. While the foam and wheel cleaner were still working their magic, I shifted my focus to the tyre. I again generously sprayed Auto Raz Focus on APC all around the rubber. Immediately after, I grabbed my scrubbing brush and worked it in. This allows for a far deeper clean, and in turn will help with the last stages when I'm applying a tyre shine, improving the overall look and performance of the product. When it came to rinsing it all off, I first started with the wheel wells. These were padded, so a good rinse was enough to remove the loose dust and dirt, before then washing from top to bottom across the wheel. This exact same process was followed for the rest of them. Now that all the wheels are all clean and stripped, I grabbed my pressure washer with a foam cannon attachment to coat the car. It was filled with a combination of Focus on APC and Bowden's own snow job. They work together to help for a safer clean of light mess on the surface. The soap sticks and drags the mess, while the small dose of APC helps to remove any existing waxes or other light protective coatings. I did my very best to cover the car from bottom to top, but to be honest, I don't think it makes a major difference whether you do from bottom to top or from top to bottom. While the foam was dwelling, I worked around the car with a soft brush and cleaned the tighter spots where the wash mitt might have trouble reaching later. At this point, you can give an additional spray of APC to help for a deeper cleanse, but using the foam here seemed enough. It might not make a major difference when applying the foam, but when rinsing it, it's preferred you go from top to bottom to ensure the mess is being rinsed down effectively and not brought back over the clean spots. As soon as the foam was completely rinsed off, I moved to the two bucket method. One full of plain water and the other dedicated to the car soap. Working in straight motions, I focused on a panel at a time, dunking the mitt in the rinse bucket if it got too dirty or after each panel. This process is good practice to help reduce the chance of installing defects. Even though this car is loaded, we'd still prefer to not add more, and this method should still be carried out in the same way if a car was defect free. I rinsed off the soap as I completed a larger area, leaving the car free of suds and ready for the next cleaning stage. For this next step, it stated that the car should be dry, so that's what I did first. Using Bowden's own three-way and their clang rubber, I worked on a panel with the goal being to remove any existing iron particles, removing heavier contaminants, and leftover protective coatings like waxes and sealants. Same as before, I rinsed as I went to remove all that mess that had been loosened. The spray acted as an iron decon, as well as a stripping agent and a lubricant for the claying rubber. Once again, this is an additional deeper cleaning step that will allow for easier correcting work and help for a superior bond with the paint protection later on. What's great about this product that even if it does dry, which we don't want, but it can happen, you can easily rinse it off, and it will be free of any unsightly residue. Perfect for me, as I don't always have access to cover to avoid the sun. To complete this stage, I once again gave the car a secondary quick bath with the wash mitt to remove any excess spray from the product, then rinsed it all off and dried it. 
The car was now clean, cleansed, decontaminated, basically stripped bare. We can now get a better idea as to how badly swirled up this car is. I pulled it into the carport and then worked my way around taping off rubbers and plastics all over before I began using my polisher. This basically helps to avoid staining those given surfaces with the correcting products. Now, I had to pick the appropriate combo to help remove the defects in the paint. This is known as the cutting stage. We'll be removing a minute layer of the clear coat to bring back a more refined finish. I chose Shoal Concepts S3 and Shawmate's yellow cutting pad. This is a harder paint so I could take the heavier cut. But we don't just want to go to an excessive end of the spectrum, as the less clear coat we remove to restore the paint, the better. I added a few drops to the pad, then gently pressed it over the surface. I used a low speed and fast movements to spread the product, then turned the speed up and my hand movements down. I worked on a cross hatch motion, up, down and side to side across one another. This helped achieve the best results I could. Now it was fantastic to see that after a few passes as a test, I could already see results. I continued over the rest of the car, doing my best to remove the unsightly swirls and scratches. Now of course, different paint correcting combinations will work better for different cars. They vary across the board. This job can be time consuming, and in fact a two stage correction like what I'm doing here now, usually takes around two days. First day for cleaning and cutting, and the second day for polishing, prepping and protecting. So this was the finished results after using the compound. It has helped to remove the swirls and other light scratches, but it also installed some marring, which can happen and is exactly why we polish. Speaking of polish, it is now time to start polishing. I went with Shoal Concepts S30 and Shimate's Orange Intermediate Polishing Pad. I followed the same process as the cutting stage with S3, but now I'm refining down my work even more, aiding in removing the marks installed from compounding and adding a brilliant shine. Both of these products were easy to buff clean, and I was happy with how they were bringing back that nice blue. Now that I had finished with the polishing, the car was brought out and given a foam wash to help remove the dusting from the previous step stuck in the tighter areas. It was then dried and the glass was cleaned up using AutoRaz Focus on Glass. Up next was prepping the paintwork. Some people would go straight from correcting work to protecting the paint, but this step helps to remove any residual polish or compound left behind. I used Shine Supplies Throwback, a quick spray then wipe clean. This also helps with the protective coating you decide on, to adhere better to the paintwork and in turn, last longer. Now time to lock in all that hard work. I decided to go with Nova Luster first. I sprayed it directly over the paint, spread it evenly and thoroughly with one MF towel and buffed it to a brilliant gloss finish with another plush MF towel. Once waiting two hours for it to cure, I added Nova Jet on top. This was completed in the same process, applying it to glass, plastic and rims as well. These two worked in harmony to bring about an unbelievably slick and deep gloss finish. I went about with the other final steps which involved applying a tire shine. I went with AutoRaz Focus on Tires, massaging it in with an MF towel. Doing it like this just avoids overspray. Lastly, I polished up the exhaust tips. The engine bay and interior were also cleaned right up, but for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to include that. This was the end results. The car was looking a whole lot better. Those swirls and scratches diminished the overall look of the car. Even from a distance, the paint was obviously in need of some deep cleaning and correcting attention. And that's exactly what it got. Luster and Jet helped to seal in the mostly defect free paintwork and made for some nice water repelling surfaces. Today's the day it gets given back to the customer. 
I need to be happy with my work and a last check is vital before handing over the keys. I can say that I'm really happy with the end results and if you follow along with the similar or same steps to fix up your car or someone else's, I'm sure you'll be happy too. On that positive note, I'm going to end this video here. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to check out some of my other uploads. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you all later.